Hello all, thanks for joining in my last video on this Shant I Clear 2D570. I focused in on the voice coil and spider that requires reproduction. Before I get into my reproduction efforts, I want to share a few interesting points. I took time to measure all segments of the magnet wire that was originally used to create the voice coil and the total length was right at 164 inches, which would equate to approximately 70 turns. Now, if I were to use 70 turns of 36 gauge magnet wire, the DC resistance of the coil would be somewhere right at 5.7 ohms, which would provide a nice 8 ohm speaker impedance match. So knowing I had more turns or more length of wire, I decided to go ahead and check the output transformer and identify the turns ratio which ended up measuring 40 to 1. So squaring 40 gives me 1600. So reviewing the tube manual for a type 43 tube, the load resistance for my design would be somewhere around 4000 ohms. If I divide the 4000 by 1600, that gives me a desired design impedance of around 2.5 ohms and a voice coil DC resistance of approximately 1.8 ohms. With this information at hand, I decided to design my new voice coil accordingly. So doing the math, at approximately 22 turns of 36 gauge magnet wire would be required for a total length of 52 inches. A much easier coil to wind by hand versus the 164 inches, and more importantly, this will provide a better match for the Type 43 tube based on the turns ratio of the output transformer in the radio. So let's take a look at the voice coil former that I created. And by the way, I experimented with various materials, including shipping tapes, various paper weights, that is the thickness, and settled on a paper at about 3.5 mils or 3.5 one thousandths of an inch. I had already measured the center pole piece of the speaker and knew that my voice coil diameter needed to be 0.75 inches or just a shade larger. So looking through my toolbox, I found the perfect former, a 13 millimeter socket one inch long. By measuring the gap between the center pole piece and the frame, I knew I had just north of three one hundredths of an inch to work with in total. Here I am making the coil former by using again the 13 millimeter socket, the paper, the glue, which is four parts wood glue, one part water, two parts alcohol. The alcohol really makes it dry quickly, removes any wrinkles, and the paper really provides for a nice symmetrical form that's very slick. After the coil former dried, and confirming that the diameter was correct for the center pole piece, I started wiring the voice coil by hand as depicted here. Every few turns I used a small drop of super glue to hold the windings taut and to try to keep them as straight as possible, which was not easy. Once I completed the wiring of the coil and the super glue dried, I knocked off all high points using 800 grit sandpaper making sure not to remove any of the protective covering of the magnet wire. Then I verified the coil again into the center pole piece and made sure there was no rubbing and also verified the DC resistance to confirm that I didn't create any issues. With the voice coil complete, other than cutting to the desired length, I focused on recreating the spider based on the partial spider that was remaining. Here are some photos of me tracing out the existing spider, cutting it out of paper, and confirming its compatibility and match with the voice coil and associated speaker frame. Next, I used a spray adhesive applied it to the back of the spider that I had just cut out, let it set for about 30 seconds, and applied it to a playing card, which is what I decided to use as my spider material due to its composition and flexibility. 
Some additional photos here, just me checking the spider for proper fit and size. And just doing some more trimming to support the attached voice coil former. After reproducing the spider, I cleaned up the speaker frame, removing all of the existing uh, cone, etc. I then cleaned around the pole again using double face tape. I uh, blew it out with force air numerous times and repeated that process numerous times. Next, I attached the spider to the former and measuring the coil height, I did my best to have the coil set center way between the bottom and top of the center pole. Additional photos of the former coil and spider that I reproduced. I initially used super glue to attach the spider to the former and then once it dried I actually applied my glue mixture that I talked about earlier just for reinforcement. Here's a photo of the voice coil actually centered positioned to hive with shims installed. After connecting the voice coil to the secondary of the output transformer, I placed the new speaker cone on, glued it to the voice coil and frame and let it set up for 24 hours. Now the big moment, does it work? The answer is yes. I'm amazed I was able to pull this off. The audio is not perfect, but really not bad for my first try at reproducing the former, the spider, the voice coil, and reconing this little 5 inch speaker. So before listening to the radio play, I also did some screen capture using my DATS hardware and software, and as you can see the impedance sweep is fairly close to my intended design across the audio spectrum. So here we go. But Tom Brady just has shown me more over his back and forth and I was listening to Lupica earlier today and Kevin Winter go back and forth and I had my picture and I said I'm locked and loaded and then they started talking and Kevin Winter you have completely thrown me off my betting game today <laughs> Seattle it's an eight point spread and New England depending on where you look six and a half seven points what do you think Seattle by the way eight Privately held. I mean, there's some will be native azaleas. Call Paul. Harvard dropout. The idea that Hypno is a recruiting tool for terrorists. Thanks for taking time to watch the video. And thanks again to all my new subscribers.